All right, we're live at the uh, fully charged event here in Austin, and we're gonna go check out the Rivian people. All right, let's talk about the Rivian. The Rivian is, I would call it the next real electric truck to, that is gonna hit the market, or maybe even the first one. I don't think there is a mass-produced fully electric vehicle that is compelling to hit the market. There are some weird ones that came out, you know, 10 years ago, like, you know, by Ford, the Rangers and stuff, but modern, that it's going to be appealing to the mass market of truck uh, people, right? And so Rivian is going to be my first brand new store-bought electric vehicle. We own a Model 3 that is for my wife. I drive my classic uh, Volkswagen ZIY electric cars, but this is gonna be the first one. I'm gonna buy, I pre-order both of these, the truck and the SUV. And of course, these are for business purposes. And hopefully I'm gonna take delivery of one of the first ones or very early ones. And I'm going to make videos about them. And then I'm going to review them and possibly even put them on tour so that people can drive them and can see what it is before they place their order, right? Because I think like Tesla, I think this is gonna be kind of a waiting game when they finally hit the market later on this year, right? So they are scheduled to be delivered at the end of this year. So two weeks ago, I was able to see the, the, the company at, in Austin, Texas at the Fully Charged event. And uh, even though there was nothing new that they brought uh, on the surface, I think there, for me in particular, there was cool stuff that I hadn't seen. Like for example, up at this point, We've only seen the green SUV version, right, of this one. Now here at the show, they had this white one, which looks pretty good in pictures, but once you're there in, in, in real life, this thing looks pretty amazing. I mean, it's pretty fancy. It's not overly done. It's the, the, the design is kind of simplistic and, you know, but, it's, but it looks luxurious. It looks like a cool car and I can't wait to get my hands on that. I am a fan of the SUVs more so than the trucks, but I did pre-order a truck just because I knew that was gonna be the first uh, one to hit the market. And so then I, uh, I got the truck and then also the SUV. As I was talking to the people here at the show, so it turns out if you place uh, an order, so you save your place on the order queue and it doesn't really matter what you specified at that time. You will be able to choose, you know, choose your options and stuff like that. So I think I'm in a good place and I will be one of the early deliveries for this one, which is really cool. Um, at the show here, they had a powertrain. I think it's an early version of the powertrain because it had this cool 3D printed half of the case, right? And so was mostly where the transaxle was at, where the gears and the differential was at. It was all 3D printed. And I got a chance to see, you know, inside in there and see the splines, which is gonna be pretty cool for us DIY people once we get our hands on these then we might need to make uh, shafts so that we can put these models in other stuff. But another thing that was new for me was uh, the ability to talk to the engineers. I wasn't really able to do that at the LA Auto Show the first time that I saw this company and their cars, right? At the, I'm not really kind of a pushy person and I, you know, I, on social situations, I'm not really that good at, pushing myself up to the front of the line and then saying, hey, I expect to be taken seriously and I need someone to talk to me and give me an interview, right? So often I I don't, I'm not able to get interviews or talk to the engineers. Well, this time around, it was a pretty lax scenario. They've been there for a full, you know, two days and on the times that I showed up to the booth, they were just sitting there waiting, you know, there's not a lot of people around them. So I really got to have candid conversations with the engineers and I am surprised that uh, some of these guys are, are kind of DIY and they have their own conversions and as no surprise would be they watch my channel which is pretty weird thing that uh, these guys that are you know pretty involved in the design and engineering of this ne I mean this next company that I think will probably be as big as Tesla right um, 
on the utility side of the electric vehicles moving forward, you know, they watch my videos, which is crazy. And I got, when I was talking to them, I did have some insights into how the company operates. I was put in, in touch with the person that is, handles the PR and they kept telling me that they're not doing uh, factory tours and they're not really doing kind of interviews showing the technology and i'm like well uh, yeah huh? what about all the ones that i keep coming across in the internet online right so uh, you know and now at the very least i'm in their radar and i probably will be able to get in there and maybe have go to the factory take a tour and maybe see maybe the battery lab that is here in california which is very close to me and this is the stuff that we might be really interested in, right? But I really had a, a chance to have conversations and I asked them one thing. I said, like, you know, I, I'm a believer in this company because I feel like they're not hinging on any crazy technologies. It's just pretty straightforward stuff that is out there, right? It's like, it's just motors and computers and no crazy battery technology. They're just using, you know, 21700s, just like Tesla is doing and they're building giant packs right so big that even the 400 uh mile version of that pack which is 180 kilowatt hours uh it's so big that it will actually prevent you from using a third row in the suv right on the truck i think it doesn't make a difference because you just have a flatbed down there or back there but on the suv it they will have to double stack enough modules that would they won't you won't be able to put that third seat back there which is kind of kind of weird i guess i mean it's uh it's a compromise i guess right i think moving forward though these giant large packs are not going to be essential because obviously as more and more the infrastructure of the fast dc gets laid out uh in in more places in the united states then you don't really need to be carrying all that battery around with you because then if you really need to go really far that one day you know once a month or twice a month or whatever then you just charge that you know you fast charge that one time you just allow yourself an extra 20 30 minutes uh of travel time and you will be fine right and i think moving forward that is gonna be the thing i think these giant 400 500 you know anything above 300 miles i think it's really not gonna materialize i think when you look at uh tesla's uh you know the p100ds uh, well maybe due to the cost of stuff but like they don't seem to be very very popular i uh, most as most people just get the 85s and maybe the 90s and stuff right uh i think that is going to be the case moving forward and so i think uh this is not gonna play such a big thing on this vehicle so so i got a chance to talk to this gentleman right here and he comes from GM, he was one of the uh, key people, the engineers that developed the powertrain and the battery systems for both of them, the Volt and the Bolt. And they, he went somewhere else, another company, and then he ended up hey, Tesla and then now at Rivian, right? So this guy pretty much knows a lot about these battery packs that are being put on these modern electric vehicles i was asking him if they are learning from tesla and they you know yeah he told me that they actually uh, did they they rivian themselves bought a model 3 and they took it apart just to see you know whatever the latest advancements they are in the battery assembly realm right and so they consider themselves to be kind of in the middle not as slow as not as conservative as the traditional car companies right but also not as crazy and not as risk takers as tesla so they live somewhere in between kind of trying to learn from tesla and they're not making trying not to make the same mistakes that tesla's made and take as many chances and of course with all the money that is being invested uh for them i think it's going to be great right they have a few hundred million dollars from amazon a few hundred million dollars from um, chrysler uh and uh who was the other one yeah general motors right i think and so yeah i think this company is it's bound to succeed i think it's very well on their way they're they're a bit conservative which is i think it's a good thing they're not too risky and i think this is going to be the next mass market electric truck right yes i know tesla's coming up with the cyber truck and yes i think people are warm enough to the design of that truck i think yeah it's going to be a contender but i think this is going to be an instant hit when it hits the streets later on this year and i can't wait to get my hands on one of them and do videos showing to you guys
All right, with that, I say thank you for watching this video. Thank you for all your support. And if you like what I do, make sure you hit the like, subscribe, and share on these videos. It really helps my channel to keep growing and to, to keep going doing what I do, right? So thank you again. We'll see you in the next video. Bye.